Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Lardy, Psych Andrew, you can find me on Twitter, and tonight I am coming at you live from my parents' basement. So we're going to be talking tonight about um, the Supervisory Capital Assessment Program Design and Implementation. So this is basically the Fed's methodology for the bank stress tests that will be occurring, uh, that have already occurred and are coming out on Thursday. So I figured it'd be really cool to do a text analysis of their methodology. Personally coming from a psychology background and just getting my master's degree in I.O. and I saw this is a great opportunity to use all the text dictionaries I have and just see what they're capable of and try to make a prediction about what's coming out on Thursday. So there's um, basically something that we should go over first is what is this document about and basically as they said it's important to recognize that the assessment is a what if exercise intended to help supervisors gauge the extent of additional capital needs across a wide range of potential economic outcomes also a need for additional capital capital or change in composition of capital to build a buffer under an ep economic scenario that it is more adverse than he expected, and is not a measure of viability of it is not a measure of viability of the firm. So basically, they're saying we're going to do some what-if analysis. If this goes wrong with the economy, what's going to happen to the bank and their, with their current capital? And if certain things change, what's going to happen? And they're saying, well, this isn't really affect the firm. If it's a good firm, it's a good firm. If it's a bad firm, it's a bad firm. Which really doesn't make any sense because if the economy goes bad and they can't sustain, well, it is a test of the viability of the firm. First off, um, with a little background, they said that in early March, the firms had submitted their projections, that's a key word, to the agencies which includes significant amounts of detailed data. Further on, the United States Treasury has committed to make capital available to the eligible bank holding corporations through the Capital Assistance Program. So, what else are they doing? Banks basically gave them projections of their capital needs with detailed data. So basically what they got was bullshit. So what did I do? Um, well, I took this methodology document, the uh, Supervisory Capital Assessment Program Design and Implementation, and I ran it through four text analysis dictionaries. I ran it through a regressive imagery dictionary, the loop dictionary, a political dictionary, and diction. There were, and I'm going to go through each one. I'm going to tell you the results and give you some idea of what we're going for here. So this was a fishing expedition. I did not have predefined hypotheses. I want to put that out there because it's very important for other people to know that. But before I did this, I said, what would convince me of a strong methodology? When I'm reading a paper or reading something about psychology, why is this methodology good? I want to know that's thoughtful, that it has a solid foundation, that they're not lying, that it has a strong method, that they're thinking about what's going on, that's using proper statistics with proper methodology, and that they have a positive bent on their methodology, and that they're confident about it that this is the Beth methodology and that they've justified it um, accordingly. So the first thing is a regressive image dictionary. Now this dictionary is mainly used for raw shock assessment and it picks up on primary, secondary, and emotional thinking. So second, primary thinking you have to think child, baby, sensory, um, colors, images, different things like that. Very, very primitive stuff needs, uh, sensations. So it's good to know that they scored low on this. And it was about 6% of the document had these type of primary words in it. What's good to know is that their secondary thinking, which is social behavior, moral, order, instructional behavior, and abstract thought, really important things to adult and mature thinking, this was 15% of the document. And this was really uh, good to know because we know that the government is thinking. I mean, who would have thought that? But it's a great thing to know. So, the next thing we went over, I did, was the political dictionary, which was done by this guy, La 
Larvy and Gary. And they basically talked about economy, values, culture, and groups, and urban and rural uh, characteristics. This was mainly for analyzing political speeches, so I'm like, let's throw it out there and put it through. What did you know? But economy was the most talked about um, section. That came up at 6%. The other interesting thing that came up was there had these two subgroups within economy that were state 